Well, this is still the Christmas season, a couple of days after Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know, I love this time of year when we just take time and think about all of the good things that Jesus has prepared for us, that God has prepared for us in sending his son Jesus into the world. It's the beginning of the story. It's not, it's not, I mean, God prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was born, but the birth of Jesus is the beginning of Jesus' story, Jesus' life on earth, and all the way through that to the culmination of our salvation when he died on the cross brings new life to us. It's such a great, great time of year. And I just want to encourage you guys, just continue to take time, meditate on God's goodness, meditate on his love for you, because it's a love that knows no borders, knows no bounds. Today I want to talk about beginnings. And let me just read, let me just read from the Bible here. Um, this is from Luke chapter 2, and it's a story of what happened after Jesus was born. This took place about 40 days after Jesus was born. According to the customs uh, of the, the Jewish people, what would have, have to happen is when, whenever someone has a firstborn, whether it's, uh, whenever they have a firstborn son, the Jews have to go to Jerusalem and present them at the temple and to present a sacrifice at the temple. And so they would go up to Jerusalem and bring their sacrifice as a way of consecrating their uh, child, their son, to the Lord. And we see in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 24, this is what uh, Joseph and Mary did after Jesus was born. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And he was circumcised on the eighth day in Bethlehem. And then on the 40th day, they went up to Jerusalem. And it says there, it says in, in verse 22, it says, Now when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So Joseph and Mary take Jesus to the temple. He's already named. He's already circumcised. But they take him to the temple as part of this consecration ceremony on the 40th day, 40 days after he was born. But there's two people that Joseph and Mary met in that temple at that time. The first is a man named Simeon. And let me read. This is the next verse uh, uh, from in, in Luke chapter 2. And it's verses 25 to 35. I'm just going to read it. And I want you guys to hear Simeon's perspective. I want you to hear what he was anticipating, what he was looking for, what he, what he said and thought when he saw Jesus. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And Simeon came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents, Joseph and Mary, brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, Simeon took Jesus up in his arms and blessed God. And he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And Jesus' father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. So here Simeon is, 
Bible says he was righteous and devout, filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads him into the temple when Joseph and Mary take Jesus into the temple to consecrate him. And something stirs within Simeon's heart. And the Holy Spirit speaks to Simeon and says, This baby boy is the one that you are waiting for. Simeon knew from the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he sees the Lord's Messiah or the Christ, the, 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 the fulfillment of all of the years and years of prophecy all through the Old Testament that were pointing the way to Jesus. Simeon received a word from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said to Simeon, you will not die until you see the Messiah. And here come Joseph and Mary, just another couple with a newborn son. You know, this would be, this, is, this was the temple in Jerusalem, and there were probably every day couples bringing their baby into the temple to bring their sacrifice. But when Simeon saw Joseph and Mary, something happened inside of him. The Holy Spirit said, this one, this is the one. Not all these other ones, but this one. This is the Messiah. And I just want to talk today about the birth of a promise. Jesus was just a little baby. You know, if you have ever seen a newborn baby, can't really do much. They can't get around on their own. They can't feed themselves. They can't change their diapers, you know, they, they can't do anything on their own. And here was this helpless little baby, but it was the birth of a promise. And it was the beginning of something special, because it was the beginning of Jesus' life. And we all know what happens later on, his ministry, healings, deliverances, miracles, all the great parables and, and teachings. And then he went to the cross to die for our sins, but all of that Hadn't happened yet. Here's just this little baby boy. This little baby. But something happened in Simeon's heart that was from the Holy Spirit. And he said, this one. And Simeon said, I can die now. He said, it's okay for me to die. I have seen the promise. He hasn't seen the full fulfillment of it yet. But he saw the beginning. He saw the birth of of the promise. And he said, that's enough for me. That's enough for me. I may not live to see all of Jesus's miracles. I may not live to see all of the great things that he's going to do, the salvation, but I have seen the beginnings of the promise. I've seen the birth of the promise. So that was the first person. There was another person in the temple named Anna. This is continuing the same story in Luke chapter 2. It says, there was a prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. Uh, it's spelled with a P-H. I think probably it's, it's uh, pronounced Penuel. Of the tribe of Asher. She was very advanced in years, having lived with her husband for seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not leave the temple but she worshipped with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. So here we had Simeon. Now we have Anna. Anna, she had been a widow for a long, long time. She probably got married very, very young. In those days, the women would get uh, uh, married in their teenage years, maybe 15, 16 years old. Then it says that she lived with her husband for seven years. Then her husband died. And ever since the time that her husband died, all the way until now, when she was 84, she had lived in the temple, fasting, praying, waiting for the promise. And just like Simeon, she was waiting for the promise, the Messiah. And she saw baby Jesus as well. She saw the birth of the promise. And she said, here he is. 
And she proclaimed to all who were waiting around, all those other people who were in the temple, this is the Messiah. This is the one. They hadn't seen any miracles. Just a helpless little baby, 40 days old. But they knew. They knew. They, they held on to something. They knew that this promise was the beginning of something great. You know, in our lives, sometimes we receive promises as well. What do we do with those promises? Sometimes it's a word from God. Sometimes it's a stirring in our spirits from the Holy Spirit, just like Simeon received when he saw Jesus. But what do we do with those small beginnings? What do we do with, those, with the birth of promises in our own lives? Do we let them die? Or do we say, no, this is it. This is the beginning of something great, something wonderful, something awesome that's going to bring great, great fruit. Listen to these other verses. Zechariah 4.10, it says, Who despises the day of small beginnings? Don't despise a day of small beginnings. Don't say, oh, yeah, that was nothing. It was just, just another baby came in. Yeah, we, there's hundreds of them today. It was just another one. Don't despise the beginnings of the promise, the birth of the promise. When someone says to you, no, I, I, I feel God's moving and I, 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 I feel that God's going to move mightily on this person. I've been praying for them. I believe. And even though the circumstances are all around him, I know that that person's going to come to the Lord and they're going to surrender to God's salvation. Don't despise those things. Hold on to those things in faith because those things will grow up. Just like Jesus grew up and he was the fulfillment of God's promise, God's promised salvation, don't despise small beginnings. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Say that with me. He who began a good work will complete it. He began something. Don't let it go. Don't wonder about it. Don't doubt it. Say, no, God has done something. Maybe you're going through a rough time and, and maybe your, your faith starts to take some hits or you start to wonder. Maybe life is stressful you, you start to doubt, no, hang on to the promise. Even though the promise might just be a little helpless baby right now, hang on to what God has spoken to you. Remind yourself of his word. Remind yourself of those things that were in the beginning. Those things that, that, that brought you close to Jesus. Those things that worked in your heart that that made you make those decisions that made you make that commitment for Jesus don't let those things go but hang on to them because the Bible says in Philippians 1 6 it says he who began a good work you didn't begin this work in yourself God began it you didn't begin that work in somebody else Simeon didn't begin this work God began a work and God is going to complete it so hang on to it in faith. Don't forget, don't neglect the birth of the promise. What are some things that we can do to hang on to those promises that God has spoken to us? Well, one of the things that I like to do when I read, uh, when I read the Bible, I like to see the meanings of people's names. You know, in, in a lot of times... People were named for certain things. You know, Benjamin, the name Benjamin, it means the son of my right hand, the son of my strength. Um, lots of different uh, uh, names mean different things. And it says in the story, it says that Anna was the daughter of Penuel from the tribe of Asher. That name Anna, first of all, her name means grace. It means the grace of God. 
So God's grace was on Anna. But it's interesting, she was the daughter of a man named Penuel. And it's the same name that's used way back in Genesis chapter 32. When, when Jacob has an encounter with God. And, you know, it, the, the story goes that they were, they were wrestling and, you know, he, 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 they, were, they wrestled together and, and they wrestled from nighttime until daybreak. And Jacob said, the name of this place is Peniel. And that name means the face of God. The face of God. It's the only two times when, when in the Bible when those things were, when that name was used. And so it was with Jacob, he named a certain place the face of God. And then Anna was the daughter of a man named Peniel, the, the face of God. And it's interesting because she was the daughter of, of the face of God, but then she got to see the face of God when she saw Jesus face to face. But the face of God doesn't just mean a physical face, but it means the presence of God. And Jacob experienced God. He had an encounter with God. He saw the face of God. It was the presence of God Almighty. And that's what Anna did. She lived in the presence of God. It says that she was in the temple day and night. She was in the very presence of God. She committed her life to God. God gave her a promise, and she saw the fulfillment of that when Joseph and Mary came and brought Jesus in. Even though she was old, she was 84 years old, she said, just like Simeon, I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him. And that was fulfilled in her life. So to me, one of the ways that we can see the birth of the promise and hang on to those things in our lives is to stay in God's presence. You know, we hear a lot about God's word says this, these are the promises of God, this and that. And, um, you know, we hear lots of time we're in when we're in church. But if you're not in the presence of God on a regular basis, the world doesn't remind us of God's promises. The world has nothing to say to us about God's goodness about God's promises, about the hope that we can have, about the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. The world has nothing to say about that. The only place that we can find that is in the presence of God. And the only place that Anna found it was in the presence of God too. And she committed herself all of those years, from the time her husband died, probably when she was in her early 20s, all the way until she was 84. She committed herself. This is where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in the temple. I'm going to be fasting. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be seeking God. I'm going to be seeking his face until she saw Jesus' face face to face. And if we want to see those promises fulfilled in our lives, if, if we want to see ourselves grow up and see those promises not just become a baby but reach their full maturity, we need to be in God's presence all the time as well. Don't look over, overlook the small things. Don't overlook the small things. Don't look, overlook the small beginnings. But we need to guard what has been given to us from God. Maybe you've been saved for a long, long time. You've heard the promises of God. Maybe there were times when someone said this or that to you and it stirred something, but now Oh, you've kind of forgotten about it. You haven't spent that much time in God's presence. Okay, remind yourself of those things. You know, God's word never returns void. So even if maybe you have neglected it over the years, return back to his word. Maybe you're a new Christian. Maybe you just gave your life to the Lord just last week. Okay, hang on to those promises. Hang on to that salvation. Hang on to that goodness. Because there may be times in your future where your faith gets questioned, where your commitment gets questioned, maybe by yourself, maybe by other people, but hang on to the promise. Don't neglect the, that birth of the promise. 
Anna was committed to the house of God. Here at New Life, we have so many ways that we want to help and see people grow in their promises and in their new life. We have what we call our life guidelines classes, our LG classes. These classes are an introduction to God to help us get to know who God is and help us to know what God's purpose for our lives is. And we can grow in that and we can understand it and we begin to walk in the calling and the, the purpose that God has for our lives. Did you know that God has a reason that you are here on earth right now? And that's his purpose for you. He has a destiny for you. He has a calling for you. And we, can, we have our life guidelines classes that we can, we can understand and we can learn about those things. We also have our school of ministry on Wednesday nights. School of ministry is for people who we've done the life guidelines classes. Now we want to go a little, grow a little bit more in God. We want to know more deeply. We want to understand more clearly the things of God. What does the Bible teach? How can I know these things? How can I study the Bible? How can I understand what the Bible says for myself so that every day I can spend time in the presence of God? Not just when the church doors are open, not just when we have an online service, but every day. Spend time worshiping, spend time reading the Bible, understanding. These school of ministry classes, these can help you to do that, to understand, grow, and grow day by day. We also want to encourage everybody, don't neglect your small groups. Small groups are such a key way for us as a, as, as a community, as a church, to grow. We don't grow just by ourselves, but we grow as we commit to each other, as we encourage each other, as we see what God is doing in this person and that person, and I'm going to share what God is doing in me. I hope that's going to be an encouragement to this person. And we grow together. God meant for us to be in families. We have our physical families, but we also have our spiritual families. And that's what cell groups are for us. It's a spiritual family where we can encourage each other, help each other, pray for each other, and be a strength and a support for each other. So... Those three things are three key things that we do at New Life. The Life Guidelines classes, the School of Ministry, the cell groups. And if you are not a part or you've never done the Life Guidelines classes, I want to encourage you. Contact our office. Get a hold of us through Facebook. Send us a message. Call us. There are several ways that we want to get in contact with you to give you more information about these classes. When the next class is starting, who's teaching, where it'll be. We have all that information all ready for you guys. We also have our, our school of ministry. We want to encourage you to do those. Um, right now, we're not, uh, we're not studying in person, but we're doing it online and through classes and stuff. So we want to encourage you to continue uh, uh, pursuing God through those school of ministry classes and get involved in a small group. I can guarantee you there's a small group in your area with people who want to open up their hearts to you and bring you into a into a community to grow together to journey together with Jesus. God is so good to us. There's a very, there's a beginning but that that beginning is a is a is a monumental thing. You know, you know even just thinking about all of history, the way we do years. We're close to the end of 2020. In just a few days, it's going to be 2021. But why do we say 2021? If we look back, historically, that's 2,021 years after the life of Jesus. This tiny baby that Simeon saw split history. Split history. Now, everything, we count everything in years, everything that happened before Jesus and after Jesus. This is, now we're 20, 2021, 2021 years after Jesus. It was this, just this everyday baby. It was such an important thing that it wasn't just another baby, but it was such a big deal, even all through history, that now, today, 
we're counting the years from when this baby was brought into that temple. Oh, it's an amazing thing. And Simeon knew because of the Spirit of God. Don't neglect those small things. If you've just given your life to the Lord, don't count it as, oh, it was an emotional decision or, oh, I was just thinking the wrong thoughts or I had a bad day so I needed to. No, don't think anything like that. God did something in you. That's the beginning of something special. Get into the presence of God, let it grow, and expect great things. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for small beginnings. God, we thank you for what you have begun in our lives. And God, we thank you that you do not give up on us either. You don't just begin stuff and then just kind of forget about us and say, oh yeah, let them have their, you know, let them do it themselves. No, it's not like that. But you accomplish it. You continue what you have begun in us, God. So today, God, we make a renewed commitment to you. We make a renewed commitment to hang on to those promises, to hang on to those good things, to hang on to the birth of the promise that you have begun in our lives. And we commit to helping those things grow as well. And as we partner together, as we pursue you, as we pursue the things of God, help us to grow. Help us to see the fulfillment of what you have begun today. Lord God, I pray your blessing on each person who's watching and listening. Lord, I thank you for their lives, and I know, God, that you're stirring, that you do a work in, in people, and that you're doing a work in people even right now, God. And I, I just say yes to the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We agree with what you're doing, God, and we say it is good. We say, it is good. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. In the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great new year. And we'll see you guys next week.